Yo, before I start though, please go subscribe to our Instagram at Kicks Contest World, where we post teasers, first impressions, and also basketball and sneaker news. See you there. Now let's get to the video. Yo ballers, this is Kicks Contest, I'm Lyoha Madras Fly White and today we're gonna test not one but two versions of Andrew Wiggins' first signature shoe, Peak Attitude. The red ones that we'll be calling the regular version and the white ones that we'll be calling the performance version. So let's test the both variations and see what they can do on the basketball court. Let's go! The red ones were size 12 US and 28 centimeters. The white ones were 11 US and 27 and a half centimeters, according to the labels. My true size is 12 US and 30 centimeters, and both shoes fit pretty well. The red ones were a bit large, and the white ones were just a tad bit tight, but okay. So if you're gonna buy these, look at the US size, not the length in centimeters. Peak Attitude is a wide foot friendly shoe. There is room in the toe box, but not too much. There won't be any issues with the feet for those with high arch either. There's an inner booty, but if you undo the laces completely, you can put this on pretty easily. The toe box is a bit stiff on the medial side where the big toe is, so you'll probably need one or two runs to break it in. But it doesn't really affect overall comfort, which is pretty decent. There's there's quite enough padding in the heel area, so there's no rubbing or any other sort of discomfort. The shoes are pretty flexible and the laces won't strangle your foot even if you tie them real tight. This applies to both versions of the shoe. As a matter of fact, the differences between the two are minimal, but I will rate them separately anyway. When I first saw these netted windows on the lateral side, I thought the breathability would be next level. But in fact, these windows are blocked from the inside by a thick inner booty preventing free airflow and leaving only a small hole which isn't enough for breathability. So once you start running in these sneakers, they heat up pretty quickly. Each version has a different cushioning setup, so let's get deeper into details about each of them. On the regular version, Peak used a super p foam. It's much like Nike's Phylon and it's pretty thick in both heel and forefoot area of the midsole. The impact protection is decent, but it doesn't really give you energy return. And it became obvious by the end of the tests that its squishiness and impact protection won't last long, maybe just a season of regular indoor basketball. The performance version used P-pop-up cushioning technology. Thank God I have a pop filter in my mic. It does look like Boost, but it's a lot more springy. It is as thick as the foam on the regular version, but it gives you that energy return in addition to great impact protection. And it didn't crumple at least during two weeks of tests, so it's kind of solid. The court feel is kind of muffled on both versions due to thick midsole. So if you're a quick guard, you might not be as comfortable making moves in these sneakers. Traction patterns are different on each version, but both are variations of a multi-directional herringbone pattern. Rubber and grooves thickness is pretty much the same on both versions. I gotta admit the traction was a pleasant surprise, the bite is great and the shoes are very squeaky. Traction was excellent even on dusty court, even though the outsole looked like this. And some fellows were skating along in their Puma court riders. There were no problems with the traction on the outdoor courts. I did my usual step backs, crossovers and didn't even sleep once. Both versions look really cool with all the interesting details, design elements, logos and patches. The performance version is kind of more interesting and intricately built. It has these extra lace loops, carbon plate in the midsole for stability and this woven material on the upper is really dope. <laughs> 
On the other hand, the regular version has these soft velour panels and tongue, leather on the heel and the sides. I had a Chinese New Year colorway, so check out these crazy bells that made my gym fellows crazy when I worked out in these shoes for the first few times. With this said, the materials are really nice on both versions. The assembly quality is decent and no issues found. The sneakers should endure at least one season of regular use for basketball. These plastic reinforcements are all around the midsole and they act like elements for lateral containment. The outsole is icy sole but it's sturdy enough to handle outdoor courts, rubber ones at least. The regular version weighs 474 grams or 16.7 ounces for size 12, which is a bit too heavy but it doesn't go over 500 grams so it's a pass. The performance version is half a size smaller and it weighs 432 grams or 15.2 ounces. So Peak didn't lie when they said they chose the upper and midsole materials specially to make the shoe lighter. I like how they implemented the lockdown system on these shoes. Reminds me of Nike PG4. The lace loops are actually straps that go all the way down to the midsole. There is not one, not two, not three, not four, but five of them from each side. So when you tighten the laces, the upper kinda hugs your foot and totally locks it down. However, there's just a tiny bit of heel slippage on the regular version. If you compare it to the performance version, the heel cup is kinda softer on the regular ones and the foam is softer too. So these two things combined affect heel stability, especially when you transfer your weight to the heel area. There's no such thing on the performance version, the heel is stable there. Both versions have crazy lateral out triggers and the outsole is really wide. So so it's all good with the lateral stability on the shoe. For more stability, there is a plastic spider looking shank inside the regular version midsole and a carbon plate in the performance version. Both shoes are impossible to twist, which is awesome. I have to drop the safety score on the regular version because of the mediocre cushioning. There is a possibility you could bruise your heel once the foam crumples. Overall, Peak Tai Chi Attitude turned out to be a pretty decent shoe, especially for a modest price point of $120 to $150. Basically, you're getting a top signature sneaker from a lesser known brand for a price of a Nike budget shoe. We would recommend these shoes for shooting guards and both forward positions. You can dunk and drive to the basket, jump for rebounds and loose balls in these sneakers without problems. A great option to spend a season indoors and then kill them on the outdoor court in the summer. So that's it for today. Smack that like button if you like this video and also subscribe to the channel if you're not because if you like sneakers and basketball you've come to the right place. Click that bell icon for notifications and comment Naughty Gang in the comments if you already done so. Also make sure you subscribe to our Instagram at Kicks Contest World where we post teasers, first impressions, ratings, basketball and sneaker news. See you there. This was Kicks Contest, I'm Lohamatras Fly White. Peace everyone. Kushti Subchik.